Welcome back to the Conference Center and Global Specs Fluid Power and Fluid Handling event. I'm Jim Brennan. Unexpected hydraulic hose failures, whether in mining, oil and gas, manufacturing, or construction equipment, can be very expensive. There's the downtime to consider and also repair and lost production, not to mention the possibility of unintentionally putting workers in harm's way or the potential for greater equipment damage. So wouldn't most companies want to avoid occurrences like these? Well, fortunately, there is a way to know when a hose has used up most of its useful life and is in need of replacement. By taking advantage of a hose diagnostic and monitoring system, companies can now be notified automatically when a hose is due to be replaced or, for example, at 80% of its useful life. They can also be notified when conditions indicate an impending premature failure due to extreme service conditions. The key features to this technology are sensors that measure temperature and pressure during use. Also, an electrical control unit and software to monitor hydraulic circuits. Built-in custom algorithms take into account how pressure and temperature extremes impact service life, automatically factoring them into the program. Now, the accuracy for 20% useful life remaining is plus or minus 10%. Today, it's possible to monitor every hydraulic hose assembly on every piece of equipment using a system such as Sentry IQ Service from Gates Corporation. This web-based application is built to gather and store data on temperature and pressure spikes, taking measurements at 50 times per second to determine their effects on the inside of the hose. This information, along with impulse cycle data, is used to calculate remaining hose service life. In short, the system tells you when a hose is going to need to be replaced, and it happens before it fails. Email messages or text alerts are sent when hose failure is imminent. And customers can also opt to be notified at their choice of how much hose life has already been used, for instance, at 80 or 90 percent levels. Adding periodic external hose inspections to complement diagnostics and monitoring is perhaps the best way to ensure extended hose life while reducing downtime and keeping replacement costs to a minimum. Here, radio frequency identification, or RFID tagging, of each hose assembly contains all the pertinent assembly data, including types, dimensions, installation date, etc. The data is scanned on site and or synchronized with a database stored on a PC to ensure proper replacements. Now, before I introduce you to our next speaker, let me quickly invite you to submit your questions at any point during this next presentation by using the Enter Question and Submit button at the base of this video console. You can also download a copy of the PowerPoint for easy reference and note-taking by clicking on the button labeled Download PPT. Now, for a further explanation on how a hose diagnostic and monitoring system can benefit end users, distributors, OEMs, and MROs alike, please welcome our next presenter. He's Timothy Deans of Gates Corporation who's here to describe how internal parameter monitoring works in concert with external hose assembly inspections to extend hose life, reduce downtime, and lower replacement costs. Tim, welcome to Global Spec. It's good to have you with us. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be here. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is an innovative new way to monitor uh, and, predict, predict, and predict hose failure uh, before it occurs on your hydraulic equipment or industrial equipment. Um, what we're looking at is a way that you can protect your investment um, so that we can monitor the hose uh, from the inside out uh, so that you're, you're not going to be locked to simply uh, visual inspections. What we're looking at is diagnostic and uh, life monitoring systems uh, that are going to prevent costly downtime on your equipment, um, any, any kind of un unavoidable failure that's going to cost you cleanup, uh, that sort of thing. Traditionally, the hose system challenges that we, that we see in, in uh, hydraulic equipment or industrial equipment uh, is the fact that a hose is a flexible conduit by design, uh, and it's also a very inexpensive component on a, on a very expensive piece of equipment. It's generally an afterthought that's not always thought about uh, when looking at the overall uh, state of the piece of equipment. Uh, what we're uh, generally looking for is an operator that gets on a piece of equipment or is, is operating it. He's looking for a visual warning sign, some of a, a crack or abrasion on the cover of the hose. Uh, there, there may be 
uh, some rust on a, on a coupling or something along those lines. That's generally what people are looking for, but it doesn't always indicate um, the full extent of the damage that the hose may have, uh, may have incurred. So what we're looking at with a, a hydraulic uh, or an industrial diagnostic system is we're looking at the inside of the hose and the damage that's occurred due to normal wear and tear or use of the hose through pressure and temperature spikes. Um, what we're trying to do is stop the unintended or un, un, unexpected failure of the hose before it happens. Hoses, um, although they are very inexpensive to put on a piece of equipment, uh, when they fail, uh, unintended failures can be very expensive. They cost downtime, um, cleanup, uh, you might have all sorts of different issues. Uh, some of the issues that we want to discuss that we want to we stop from happening altogether um, are things such as safety risk to personnel. Um, with a hydraulic injury, for instance, you can get an injection injury which can go into the skin, um, at which point the individual has to be hospitalized, uh, hooked up to sometimes a dialysis machine until their blood can be filtered out, um, get rid of the, the, uh, the fluid that's in it. Or you can be sprayed by hot oil which can burn your sinuses, your eyes, skin, that sort of thing. So the, the, uh, the severity of the injuries can be extreme or, or small depending. Uh, either way, we don't uh, ever want to see an injury due, uh, due to a hose failure. Um, environmental cleanup, uh, that can vary from sim something as simple as uh, you know, kitty litter on, on the, uh, the shop floor to uh, removing three cubic yards from the last tested dirty site if it's in a forestry application or something that's uh, you know, 10 miles out of, uh, uh, out of town or something along those lines. It varies widely depending on the cleanup and whether or not you have to call in a hazmat crew which can be very expensive as well. Um, that's what we're trying to avoid by, by diagnosing the hose before it bursts or fails. And then of course operational downtime. Operational downtime is, is probably the, the single greatest factor that affects someone's profitability when it comes to equipment. Um, what we're going to do is uh, let's have a look at the video that we've got some actual calculations that can demonstrate the downtime and the cost uh, associated with that. When downtime strikes, operations stop, and that costs money. A report delivered at the 2003 Offshore Technology Conference stated that relative to floating drilling rig downtime, every major disruption could cost one million dollars. According to the Government Accounting Office, the median cost of highway construction is 1.6 million dollars per lane mile. Downtime due to equipment failure can cost thousands per hour. When you have a flat tire in your car, you're stranded. Same with hydraulic hoses. When you blow a hydraulic hose, you're stranded. That piece of equipment isn't able to work. The downtime on a, uh, a large excavator in a, in, a, in a coal mine or a gold mine, for example, each scoop equates to a dollar amount, and a certain number of scoops fills a certain number of haul trucks. A certain number of haul trucks creates a certain amount of tonnage that they're actually going to derive ore from or coal from, and that equals dollars. According to Global Info Mine Statistics, the theoretical average daily cost of ore and waste production is $1,599 per ton. At that rate, just one hour of downtime can cost an astounding $399,750 based on 5,000 ore tons per day. Century IQ, a new service offering from Gates, can monitor the performance and condition of every hydraulic hose on all of your equipment and warn you when you're approaching potential failure. A quick change could help you prevent hours of downtime, personnel injury, equipment damage, environmental cleanup, and more. Sentry Services is a web-based application that was built specifically to gather, store, and provide retrieval and archiving for our customers. What we're doing is measuring pressure and temperature uh, conditions and determining the effect that that has on the inside of the hose. About 50 times per second, we're looking at your temperature and your pressure spikes. Basically, what you're gonna be able to do is, is know that the hose is gonna fail before it fails. Century IQ works by delivering real-time monitoring and diagnostic information, such as temperature, pressure, and impulse cycle through the Gates Engineering and Services Division. Using proprietary algorithms developed by Gates, the system continually calculates the wear on the hose and predicts how much hose life is left. Based on our uh, over 30 plus years of, of impulse lab testing on our hydraulic hose assemblies, 
here at Gates, we know how many impulse cycles at what temperature and what effect temperature and pressure have on our hydraulic hoses. Therefore, we can predict, based on the extremity of the, te of the pressure and the temperature that occurs on your piece of equipment, how much hose life can be deducted. At that point, when you're setting up on Sentry Services, you can decide if you want to have an email or a text alert uh, when you have a hose failure imminent, how you want to be alerted, um, how frequently we can set it up if you want to know when your hoses are at 80% hose life used or if you want to wait until 90% hose life used, it's up to you when you want to be notified. Sentry Services also simplifies hose replacement. Usually, identifying the hose assembly specifications is a difficult and time-consuming task. Using radio frequency tagging and identification, Sentry ID allows hose repair to be made accurately and efficiently. The guy just scans the radio frequency identification and he pulls it up and tells him exactly what coupling A is, what coupling B is, what hose it goes on, what the crimp diameters are on the couplings. That way you know not only that you're putting the right hose and couplings on, but you know that the hose assembly is built correctly. If the systems are coming back in for repair, they now have a list of the bills and materials. They know exactly when that hose assembly was built, when it was installed, when it was inspected, and when it should be replaced. Sentry Services also provides information on equipment misuse, service warnings, and out-of-specification conditions. And with that, they can uh, go in and take a look at the status of the hose assemblies that they're interested in, and they can also start to determine if any of the hoses are prematurely ready to be replaced because of the way they've been used in the particular applications. No system can fully calculate the effects of weather, abrasion, abuse, or other external factors. So regular quarterly on-site inspections by Gates Engineering and Service staff are recommended. These breakthrough services are designed to maximize the value of customer investments in Gates products and to optimize equipment performance. Sentry Services from Gates lives up to its name. Don't let failure of an inexpensive hydraulic hose shut you down and cost you money. Find out more about Sentry Services today at gates.com slash sentry. On guard against costly downtime, Sentry Services from Gates. Before we get into the advanced diagnostics of the hose systems, let's, let's set, take a quick look at the, at the current system so that we know where we're at and then where we're going. Um, right now to look at a hose or to, to know that a hose is, is healthy, uh, we're basically looking at an external visual inspection. Visual inspections are something like a hose cover. When you're looking at a hose before you start up on the, on the piece of equipment, you're going to look for cover cracks, abrasion, uh, any kind of rust on a coupling, that sort of thing. Uh, that might indicate that we've got some issues, a kinked hose, for instance, or wetness on the cover of a hose tells us that that hose has got some sort of compromise in, in the hose assembly and it needs to be replaced. Uh, the connectors or the, or the couplings, uh, we're going to be looking for uh, any kind of impact point where something may have struck them or damaged them. Uh, you're going to be looking for scratches, uh, red rust. And, Red rust on a, on a steel coupling indicates that you've got uh, a compromised situation where the strength of that coupling has lost its integrity and then that coupling has to be uh, replaced. Uh, fluid leaks, kind of a dead giveaway if you see a puddle of oil underneath the piece of equipment you might want to look a little bit further. Um, if you see fluid leaks that are right underneath the coupling, for instance on the seat, uh, you may, uh, the, the tendency for a lot of people is to simply take, grab a wrench and tighten it more. Um, not always the best case scenario if it's an elastomeric seal you need to replace the o-ring. Uh, if it's a uh, leak at the coupling and the hose interface, you need to replace the entire hose assembly and the O-rings when you replace it. Um, so again, that's something that you would visually see leaking. Um, corrosion again at the couplings or where the couplings, uh, the port where the couplings would go into or the adapter. Uh, any, any corrosion where you see a red rust condition means that you've compromised the integrity of that steel and it needs to be replaced. So those are the visual inspections that currently uh, are, are happening on the hose assemblies. Um, basically, uh, what we're looking for on internal inspections, 
Um, right now, uh, they consist of things such as a, a bore scope. You can take the hose assembly off, run a bore scope up there. You can actually look at it, uh, what we call the roto rooter approach. You actually look inside of it. Uh, you can look for things such as tears at the hose coupling interface with a, with a bore scope. Uh, you can look for sponginess of the tube, which would tell you that there's potentially a chemical incompatibility where it's absorbing some of the fluid. Once it absorbs it and swells, then, you, then you're more prone to tears, uh, permeation and that sort of thing. So you can see a lot of things currently, but in order to do this, you have to remove the hose from its application, stick a bore scope inside and look at it. Uh, of course, chemical analysis, uh, if you see blisters on the outside of a hose, that also is a dead giveaway of, of, uh, of uh, chemical incompatibility. Then you have to remove the fluid from the blister, send it to a lab, determine exactly what that fluid is. Um, filter inspections. Um, this is a fairly, fairly easy one to do. As you're, as you're servicing the hydraulic system on a piece of equipment or on a piece of uh, stationary equipment that has a filter on your, on your fluid systems, look for components such as uh, small black debris that's inside the, 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 uh, the, the filter that would indicate that the hose is coming apart and it's being trapped inside the filter. Um, beyond that, a lot of people have instituted uh, just, just uh, regimented replacement programs such as uh, manufacturer's suggested life of a hose assembly. Traditionally, if a hose from date of manufacture to the grave uh, can be between four to six years. If you buy a hose that's been on a, on a shelf at a customer's for two years prior to going in service or the date of first use of that hose, now you theoretically have cut the hose life in half uh, or so. So now that's not really the best way or the most accurate way to, uh, to ensure that you're not going to have a hose failure unless you look at the, the ley line on the, on the hose that tells you exactly what the, the date that the hose was made and then track your date of first use accordingly. Um, operational experience. Right now this is probably the single best way to know when a hose has to be replaced. And the guy who runs the piece of equipment day to day uh, knows exactly what it's capable of, knows what he's going to put it through as far as its rigors and uh, any kind of customer abuse. He's probably going to be your best bet as far as how long those hoses can last. And, and in all honesty, they, a lot of the operators will see, uh, will, will see them try and get as much hose life out of that as they possibly can. Uh, simply because they know how long that hose will fail once they start to see, how long that hose will go before it fails once they start to see leaks on that hose. On to the future of hose diagnostics. Um, what we're looking at is, is a three-part system uh, in Sentry Services. It's made up of Sentry Services, which is the, uh, the web-based application, uh, if you will. It's where the database is housed uh, on the web server that's going to, to contain all of the information that you put into it regarding uh, when the hose was made, what the crimp diameters of the couplings were, when the hose needs to be visually inspected, when the hose needs to be uh, proof tested, when the hose is put back in service or when it's taken out of service, what the previous number was, that way you can put a new hose on, replace it, and then you can track and see exactly how long the previous hose lasted. Uh, all of these things are going to be done through the Sentry Services. Um, what feeds Sentry Services is Sentry Identification. Uh, which is a small vinyl tag that we put on each hose assembly. Uh, it's got a barcode. It's also got a radio frequency identification chip, just like a library book has in it. Um, you scan it when you put the hose in service. Uh, that tells you the date of first use, and that uploads to Sentry Services. Uh, it also tells you who manufactured the hose, where the hose came from, where the hose went, um, on which piece of equipment, where in service it, it, it is located. Um, you can even include pressure ratings, um, set up your inspection regime, uh, proof regime at that point. All of that is done through the, through the small identification tag that you then upload to Sentry Services. Um, when you want even more in-depth analysis of your hydraulic system or, or any system, really, uh, that's when you're going to use a Sentry IQ. Basically, it's uh, the equivalent of an electronic control unit, uh, just like an onboard diagnostics on your automobile. This is going to determine temperature and pressure across a series of four circuits on a hydraulic system. When we look at the, the temperature and the pressure relationship on a hydraulic hose assembly, we can, pre, we can determine based on the number of impulse cycles at what temperature amplitude, um, how much of that hose life has been used through each one of these, these ticks, if you will. And, and we accumulate the ticks in the ECU, upload those to Sentry, uh, services, and then we basically can generate a report that tells you how much of the hose life you've used, i.e. how much of the hose life you have left before the hose fails. Century IQ is 
the mon constant monitoring of temperature and pressure spikes as they occur in the system um, using uh, the definition of SAEJ1927, a pressure spike is anything 30% or higher of a rated working pressure of a hose assembly. When we see that pressure spike, we count it. And then the accumulation of these pressure spikes, we can equate to the number of pressure spikes at a certain temperature or given temperature uh, variable that can then equate to how long before this hose is going to fail if it continues under this condition. Uh, all of this is counted and housed within the ECU that's on, the, on board on the piece of equipment. Um, then it's compared to an algorithm that we developed in the laboratory over years of testing. Uh, once we've achieved a certain number of pressure spikes and temperature uh, amplitudes, then we know that that hose life is deteriorated to the point that it has to be uh, replaced. What we're looking to do with this is generate some sort of reporting system so you can, base, you can have 100% confidence that the hose, uh, hoses on your piece of equipment are going to last, say, for this next job or the next six months, whatever that, that time frame is that you're trying to look at. Um, the graph shown below is a pressure temperature uh, trace analysis that we've got that shows the amplitude. As you can see, you've got a 3250 pressure spike in numerous places. Uh, assuming that you're using, a, for, for instance, a 100R17 hose, which is running a 3000 PSI uh, configuration, uh, you want to make sure that if you're going to use a marginal hose, these pressure spikes aren't going to be too excessive. They're going to damage that hose and cause it to fail prematurely. But also, you can, you can monitor and determine if you do put on a piece of 100R17 hose in that application, how, how detrimental is it going to be and how prematurely is that hose going to fail. A lot of OE manufacturers may want to consider that when looking at uh, value analysis, value engineering on a particular system to remove cost from the system, but still put a hose on that's going to work for fit, form, and function and get your customer as much benefit as they can. Parameter monitoring um, is, is uh, taking into effect, uh, again, the J1927 um, as, the, as the basis. Uh, X number of pressure spikes over 30 to 50 percent of the working pressure are going to equate to hose damage internally. Um, impulse testing in the lab, the research and development, uh, through 30 to 35 years of uh, Gates testing on our own impulse testers in the laboratory uh, across a, a myriad of tests, flex impulse, offset flex impulse, that sort of thing. What we've come up with is, is a good indication with all, all of our hoses exactly how long they will last in certain applications at certain temperatures, including elevated temperatures and, de uh, and uh, colder temperatures. Uh, what we're looking at is a way to enhance the information collection um, so that we can do it real time or as close to real time. Um, we use sensors and temperature and pressure sensors that, that uh, have a 50 hertz sampling uh, capability uh, that allow us to uh, monitor each and every pressure spike that you're going to see in a, in a system and not miss anything so that we can count it. Um, then we compare that uh, with our algorithm that we've developed. Uh, and then, of course, as, as this continues, we can, we can hone that uh, more closely for each particular model or piece of equipment so that we can take into account any customer abuse or any kind of uh, shock load values that, that are not anticipated due to lab testing. Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the monitoring parameters um, when dealing with the uh, Sentry IQ. Uh, what we're looking at is the complete monitoring per SAEJ1927. Um, what we're, what, we're, what we're looking at is the temperature and the pressure monitoring of, of these systems. Uh, so you're looking at a physical installation uh, to make this system operational in, in, in a piece of equipment. Uh, you're going to basically install this in stream with the hydraulic system, um, which generally takes about two to four hours depending on the piece of equipment and the accessibility of the certain circuits inside the hydraulic system. Uh, and then of course you're going to be looking for temperature as well. Uh, the sensors uh, that Gates uses on our Sentry IQ monitor temperature and pressure both simultaneously and, and log them into the ECU. So you install one sensor and you're capturing two pieces of data. Um, pressure uh, measurements are going to be, again, the uh, spikes above the, the specified working pressure that are going to be 30 to 50 percent uh, of, of working pressure on the hose. Um, each one of those is going to occur uh, with a certain amplitude over the working pressure and based on the algorithm, it's going to assign a value of damage to that occurrence. Um, same thing's going to happen with the temperature. Uh, and of course, you're going to take into account the frequency of those spikes as well. Um, 
ambient temperature versus uh, the high temperature of the fluid inside. Some things that that can tell you beyond just a hose failure is going to be if you've got a reservoir, for instance, that you've got enough leaks on this system that the reservoir is running at half capacity, it's not going to dissipate the heat that's required of the, of the reservoir, which is a single uh, largest heat dissipator in the uh, hydraulic system usually. Um, if I've got a, 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 a low reservoir condition, I'm not going to be getting rid of the heat in the hydraulic system adequately, so I'm going to be able to capture that on the HDMS system, and as I'm monitoring this in real time, I'll be able to see exactly what the effect of that is. Um, if it causes premature failure to the hoses, then I'm going to, go in, I'm going to get an alarm uh, on the system that tells me I need to shut the system down, and then I can look and see exactly what's causing the excessive heat in this system. The algorithm that we're working with um, is basically looking at the frequency and the amplitude of the pressure and temperature spikes in the system uh, as they're related to the working pressure of the hose or the temperature that the hose is rated at. Hoses and couplings are tested as a system to work together at a certain given temperature range. Most frequently say on a braided hose assembly at 3000 psi it's going to be negative 40 uh, to 212 degrees based on the nitrile tube stock and how it interacts with the steel couplings that are attached to it. So we want to make sure that we're monitoring within these, these parameters and that's what you would set up in your uh, Sentry IQ uh, on installation and setup of the initial piece of equipment. Um, what we're looking at would be 133% of the working pressure. Anything above that would be a working uh, pressure uh, excess or spike. So if you are working on a 3,000 PSI system, that would be very different than if it were a 5,000 PSI system that you would set up 133%. Um, temperature spikes above or below the intended uh, temperature of the system, it would capture those as well and, and set an alarm. Overall, the resulting technology that came from, from the, uh, the testing and the uh, development of the project was a HDMS, uh, Century IQ, hydraulic diagnostic and monitoring system. Uh, monitors the internal temperature and pressure of the hoses. Um, this was conceived by Gates Corporation and co-developed with our sister company, uh, Schrader Electronics. Schrader Electronics, more commonly known for the tire pressure monitoring system on most of your automobiles today. Um, these are the guys that have been monitoring pressure uh, and its effects for uh, 15 years now. Um, co-developed the ECU with Schrader Electronics uh, under the Gates umbrella. Um, we are capable of monitoring four analog, in analog input channels uh, at up to 8,000 PSI, um, negative 40 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's important because we have hoses that range from negative 70 up to 300 degrees. So this will not work on some systems. You'll have to check your system parameters before you're selecting the, uh, the components. Um, mobile or fixed locations. This can be used on a piece of mobile equipment. It's shockproof. It's also waterproof, so it can be out in the elements. Um, using a, an automotive four-pin connector, it's also waterproof on the connections as well. Um, 8230 DC volt power, so your traditional onboard 12-volt uh, battery system or 24-volt battery system can be used to power this ECU and the system. Uh, using the uh, Deutsch industrial connectors, again waterproof, uh, very simple to put on. Um, we're looking at a NEMA 4X enclosure, so again waterproof, uh, shockproof. Um, basically the inside of this enclosure, all of the components are housed in a gel to make it shockproof and waterproof. So no worry there for a mobile application, internal applications or stationary applications. Um, ideally suited for those as well. Uh, some of the communication options, if it's on board on a mobile piece of equipment, a lot of systems are using a, a CAN bus situation, uh, CAN bus protocol. Uh, CAN bus protocols that we are available to translate to uh, range from uh, J1939 to Euro CAN uh, to an open CAN network. So virtually any CAN system out there that's operating we can, we can, uh, we can communicate with. Um, and then, of course, we can use an Ethernet feed, or you can log in through, uh, uh, through your laptop for a real time and use the system as an actual diagnostics system for your piece of equipment as well. Uh, some of the remote communication options are going to range from a cellular antenna, something that's very simple, four bolts to install, plug in, to a satellite transceiver system that you can do as well, depending on what your application is, where you're located, and of course whether or not uh, you have cell reception.
Some additional advantages to the system, um, it's waterproof and it's shockproof. Uh, it's diagnosing the system at all times while the system is running. So this is a real-time monitoring system, just as it is on, the, uh, on your piece of equipment, on your vehicle, if you will. Um, as you're driving your automobile, if a service engine soon light comes on, you know that you need to stop the car or take it in for service. Same thing occurs on the HDMS system. We've got a LED indicator light that, light, that, that, monitor, that mounts to the ECU. When the lights come on, solid. Operator knows that he needs to take the piece of equipment in for service. Um, very simple to use for the operator and if you've got a fleet manager or if you've got uh, anyone who's got a vested interest in the investment that they've made in this piece of equipment or the output of this piece of equipment, they can monitor this online real time um, to see what their investment is doing or if it's uh, having some issues or if you want to diagnose a customer abuse situation, that sort of thing. Um, system can find hot spots in the system. Um, when we first, uh, first started using this system, we outfitted a PC2000 in a mine. What we found was that the return lines were getting to be about 245 degrees on a nitrile hose stock. That means that you're going to have premature hose failure due to the high temperature. Uh, that allows us to look at would you use a neoprene tube stock that might get you an extra 20 degrees in that hot application or would you have to completely reconfigure the application. So finding hot spots in the system or overpressure spikes uh, due to shock load values and that sort of thing can be done as well with the system by simply verifying the actual pressure and temperature demands that the, the hoses are, are going to be put, uh, put into. Um, monitor abuse situations. If we've got someone, for instance, that's using a, uh, a, a bucket on a piece of equipment to, to break rock, you're going to shock load certain systems in, the, in certain areas of that hydraulic system. You'll be able to see those pressure spikes on this, on this uh, system captured 50 times per second. The Gates patented algorithm estimates the end of life in the hose assembly. The idea behind this was that prior to seeing a cooked hose, uh, a cracked hose cover, uh, anything that's a visual indicator, prior to that point where you may actually experience a hose failure, we can actually determine the hose failure that's imminent due to the internal conditions, temperature and pressure that the hose sees uh, before you get to that point. So depending on how uh, how aggressive you want to be in your hose management or, uh, or in preventing hose failures, you can set up your parameters so that at 60% of hose life used you can replace the hoses or at 90% of the hose life used you can, you can replace these hoses. Um, what we're finding as we, as we uh, sell more of these systems, most people are also looking at it like a Carfax report. Uh, the overall health of the hydraulic system, you can see that it's not been overpressured, it's not been abused. So the customer abuse situations mean a lot to people when on the resale value of some of this equipment as well. Um, what we're looking for as far as fleet management or overall management of the piece of equipment is we can generate lab order, or excuse me, we can generate uh, repair orders or service uh, orders or inspection regimes based on the input from, from Century IQ, uh, radio frequency identification, and, and Century services overall. Century IQ components, uh, things to keep in mind are some of the modular uh, or, or the cellular uh, manners in which you're going to can broadcast this to, to Century, uh, Century services. Um, the ECU being the brains or the counter of the, of the uh, occurrences, the CAN bus translator system so that if you are using a, a, a CAN network other than the traditional CAN, we can translate it into that protocol for you. Uh, if you look at the right uh, figure on the right, it shows the setup that you would see on initialization of the system on the piece of equipment. So that's where you're going to set up your parameters, your high and low temperature, your high and low pressure spikes that you're going to be monitoring, and more importantly, the hose life. Uh, used indicator that's going to tell, send you a text message or an email that tells you what your hose life remaining is. So let's look at an installation, typical installation of a, of a hydraulic diagnostic and monitoring system. Uh, picture one shows you this, the uh, sensor in a, uh, just an adapter spacer block. Um, the sensor goes directly into the block in line with the hydraulic hose, therefore it's going to see the temperature and the pressure that the hose is going to see. Um, where, it's, where it's going to be located on that piece of equipment is going to be dependent on which type, which part of that system you want to monitor. Uh, and then of course it can actually be installed on a piece of equipment that's already in operation or on new equipment as well. Sentry services uh, is simply a way that we are, we are uh, using information to predetermine before a catastrophic occurrence happens on a, on a hydraulic hose or on a piece of equipment. Um, what we're looking at is uh, monitoring it through temperature and pressure, um, 
through Sentry IQ, we can monitor the temperature and pressure and the health of the overall entire uh, overall hydraulic system. We can feed that to Sentry services, and then we can use that to set up your your inspection regimes and uh, your your uh, replacement regimes as well. Sentry ID, that's the identification chip, remember, that's going to tag your hose assemblies. Uh, that's going to tell you which hose assemblies went on that piece of equipment, when they went on, were they made properly, how long are they lasting, what was the, one that the, uh, the previous hose assembly, uh, how long was it on there, who manufactured that hose assembly as well. All of that's going to, again, feed into Sentry Service as an overall system. And then we've also got what we call a condition monitoring system for, uh, for oil filled and natural gas, uh, which is going to be looking at uh, drilling mud velocities, uh, pressures, temperatures as well. Um, simply uh, for the oil filled and natural gas. It's more of a specified application. Sentry IQ applications that you might see, again, everything from mining to uh, fleets of, of equipment to oil and gas to in in indoor uh, plants and operations. Jim, that's our presentation uh, on advanced mon monitoring systems for hydraulics and uh, industrial hoses. Uh, thanks for your time. Back to you. Well, thank you, Tim, for that very informative presentation on internal parameter monitoring. And before we let you go, we do have some questions from our attendees. And the first one asks, can the Gates hydraulic data and monitoring system be installed on a machine that's currently running with older hoses? It, it can. Um, first of all, currently running would mean that we would have to shut the machine down before we install it. Um, but you would install the system on, on a, uh, a machine if you know, say for instance, it's been in operation for uh, two to four years, what you would do is set it up with your hoses that are currently on the piece of equipment under the assumption that uh, you would monitor it for say an hour under operation, determine how many temperature and pressure spikes it sees in an hour, and then you would equate that to the number of hours that it's been in operation overall, and then you would set a default number of impulse and temperature uh, that would already have occurred on that piece of equipment. It would not be anywhere near as accurate as it would on a brand new piece of equipment or if you did a new, new hose install, but it would be better than nothing. Okay, Tim, if a company uses non-Gates hoses, can they use the Gates monitoring system? Sure, uh, they can. Um, we designed this uh, in, for our OE customers uh, that use Gates hoses and couplings. Um, basically, we've tested and validated it in our laboratory, so we know that, for instance, a Gates SAE 100R17 hose on a new piece of equipment, I can have my OE manufacturer set this system up to monitor up to 400,000 or 600,000 impulse cycles because I know Gates products will go that far. SAE dictates that those products only have to go to 200,000 impulse cycles. So if you're using a non-Gates hose, my, my, my statement to you would be that you would have no choice but to go to the SAE minimums for setup operations. So when you install a system, you would have to set it up to the SAE minimums on a, on a braided hose would be 200,000 uh, impulse cycles at negative 40 Fahrenheit to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And for spiral hose applications, you would have to set it to 500,000 uh, and negative 40 up to uh, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's going to be the uh, the, the difference between the two is knowing that our, our hoses and our parameters in this system can go longer um, with the Gates hoses, you would set it up with the, 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 the higher parameters than you would a non-Gates hose. With a non-Gates hose, you would simply derate your, your parameters to use this system. Hi, Tim. This next one asks if Sentry IQ and ID services are available as individual components or only as a system. Yes, yes, they are available uh, as separate components. Again, uh, radio frequency identification is going to be your Sentry ID or identification. Sentry services is actually set up. We've had certain customers call us um, asking for a subscription to the service so that they can monitor and, uh, and uh, set up inspection and replacement regimes for lifting slings, uh, crane chains, that sort of thing as well, things that aren't even hydraulic hoses, people are now intending to put into our system simply because of the, uh, the, the wonderful inspection and notification regime that we built into the Sentry Services website. Uh, so that system would, would uh, of course, be uh, available as well, even if you're not using it for hoses. Uh, and then, of course, the, uh, the onboard ECU and the uh, Sentry IQ system would be something that you, you could purchase for, uh, a, say, a diagnostic or an advanced, advanced diagnostics tool. If you've got a mechanic that's trying to diagnose a particular issue on a, on a, on a hydraulic system, this is set up to, to plug into the RS-232 port on his uh, laptop computer so he can instrument this piece of equipment, drive it around, and pull some actual measurements on his laptop and store those as well. So yes, they, they, they can be purchased and used individually. 
And this one would like to know if the system is waterproof and shockproof. It is. Uh, it utilizes connectors that are Deutsche Industrial connectors. So you've got a waterproof, waterproof seal on the connectors here. It also utilizes a sealed box unit uh, with a gel uh, that is IP67 or NEMA 4X enclosure compliant. Well, Tim, we need to wind things up here. I want to thank you for being with us. We certainly appreciate your time and your expertise. No problem. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate the opportunity. If anyone has any questions regarding this, uh, this, this uh, information or any technical questions, they can contact us at gates.com uh, gates or they can contact us at the engineering hotline at 303-744-5070. Creating physical prototypes for testing pump designs is a thing of the past. Today, optimal pump designs are readily achieved utilizing computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, in combination with 3D CAD to empower digital testing and interactive design. Based on finite element analysis, the software allows engineers to integrate fluid flow and simulation into the earliest phases of pump design and pump engineering. By employing CF Design, CFD software recently acquired by Autodesk, Design engineers can simulate the complete range of industrial pump applications. These include the use of single suction, double suction, multi-stage, axial and radial, plus double volute pumps, as well as positive displacement pumps like sliding vane and gear pumps. Simulation permits flow performance optimization via specific pump characteristics and pump-specific speeds. Key advantages of the virtual approach are lower costs, shorter design cycles and faster time to market for new products versus a traditional pump design process that entails physical testing of the prototypes, assembly and manufacturing. Importantly, how a design change affects pump performance can be seen immediately as well as how pump curves change. When testing prototypes, factors impeding performance are difficult to pin down. Pump simulation with CF design starts in your own native CAD environment. Solid geometry from the CAD program is launched seamlessly into CF design to essentially create a virtual pump test bed. The CFD software routinely solves the toughest of pump design problems and issues. For instance, you can identify areas that fall below the fluid vapor pressure and potentially cause cavitation. Numerous companies have leveraged the CFD software to obtain impressive results. Cornell Pump Company, for instance, was able to generate a complete pump performance curve in two hours using CF Design software. It previously took 200 hours to do that. Finnish Thompson of Erie, Pennsylvania is another success story. That company used CF Design upfront CFD software to double the efficiency of a new line of magnetic drive pumps. Total product development time was also slashed, an estimated 33%. Testing time dropped from six months to six weeks. Now in our next presentation, we'll show how digital prototyping benefits pump design. And for that, I invite you to help me welcome Mark Decker, team leader for the Rotating Machinery and Pumps Group at Blue Ridge Numerics, now part of Autodesk Incorporated. Mark, welcome to Global Spec. Hey, thanks, Jim. Great to be here. Welcome, everyone. Today, I'd like to share a brief presentation, which first highlights some of the challenges facing the pump industry today. Then I'll share some details about how the transition from a physical to a digital prototyping process has been helping companies to not only be efficient, but also much more effective when competing in this market. By the conclusion of this event, I hope you'll have a better understanding of the advantages of using digital prototyping with CFD to design and test pumps, what CFD is and how it can help your company gain a competitive advantage, and how to proceed with implementing this type of prototyping process. First, let's take a glance at the state of the pump industry today. Current economic trends, downsizing, have forced many pump companies into a holding pattern with respect to optimizing pump designs. A lot of companies have been forced into survival mode the last few years, with expenditures, especially research and design budgets, being watched very closely. However, at the same time, rising energy costs and green energy concerns have potential clients demanding better and cheaper pumps that consume less power. So in essence, pump companies are being forced to do more with less resources. In order to maintain your current market share or penetrate new market space, your pumps must not only perform better than the competition, they must also represent the best overall value. The primary challenge is that with limited department budgets and resources already stretched out to the max, how do you continue to innovate your pump designs to stay competitive 
while at the same time having to control costs to maintain profit margins. At least some of the answer may be revealed when you examine your overall pump design process, specifically in the area of physical prototyping. Efficiency has been defined as the art of doing things right. The classic method of validating the actual performance of a new or revised pump design is to simply go out, make it, and test it, which is also known as physical prototyping. For most pumps, this is easier said than done due to the complex geometry involved. Many pump companies have a well-established history and have continually streamlined this physical prototyping process to make it efficient. For example, the evolution of CAM and CNC technology have now made the machining of complex impellers and volutes much better than previous manual methods. However, CNC mach machining still costs considerable money and time. If the new design does not work, then that effort is totally wasted. What if there was an alternative process that could further reduce risks and costs? Effectiveness, on the other hand, is the art of doing the right things as efficiently as possible. Companies which only focus on making their outdated technology more efficient typically find that although they may have improved their position, they still lag behind the technology curve and still find it difficult to compete with other companies that may have employed better methods. They may be efficient in terms of using their current tool set, but they are not totally effective because they have not adopted the best tools available. Gone are the days where effective pump development can be accomplished by only building and testing physical prototypes. Enter digital pump prototyping, which is accomplished with the use of computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. For now, just think of CFD as a software program which uses mathematical models proven out over the past few decades to calculate fluid flow characteristics across the vast array of industries and applications, including pumps. With CFD, you can exactly replicate your pump test rig in a virtual environment right on your own computer. Let's take a moment and examine some of the advantages that digital prototyping can have over physical prototyping in more detail. The machining, assembly, and testing of a proposed pump modification can take weeks to complete. By contrast, you could be obtaining those same results on your own computer in just a few hours with digital prototyping using CFD. By saving valuable time, you can hit production deadlines and get the market faster. In any fixed period of time, you could examine many more design concepts to ensure that the pump has been truly optimized to its full potential. So no longer will a critical design aspect be overlooked just because you simply ran out of time. For the sake of argument, let's assume for a moment that you can build and test a pump prototype in only a few hours. Would physical prototyping still be the preferred choice? Not necessarily. A pump test rig is great at providing overall pump performance parameters, such as flow rate, head, and torque. But if these values fall below target specs, the physical test cannot really reveal why the performance is off, since you can't see inside the pump. So you make your best guess and try again to fix the problem. A digital prototype with CFD allows the designer to peel back the covers and take a look inside at the detailed fluid characteristics. It's this type of insight which enables the designer to locate problematic areas and implement effective corrective action. So you arrive at the end objective, a fully optimized pump design, even faster. As an example of potential time savings that can be realized, Finnish Thompson used CF Design software to evaluate 20 pump design concepts in a period of only six weeks. So not only were Finnish Thompson designers able to improve the performance of their chemical pump, they estimated a savings of over four months of time if they had relied upon the previous method of physical testing. If you walk around a lot of pump companies, you'll likely stumble across a pile of impellers and volute casings lying out back. These are painful reminders of the costs associated with failed attempts at testing the design with physical prototyping. Machining and casting are expensive processes. If the design fails, then that shiny new impeller is not worth any more than its weight as scrap metal. Well, at least you found out what did not work, albeit the hard way. Put yourself in a designer or engineering manager's shoes for a moment. If you're guessing at the design change, are you really willing to stick your neck out for thousands of dollars of wasted manufacturing costs if your guess turns out wrong? Since no metal has to be cut or cast, digital prototyping gives progressive companies the freedom to explore those concepts 
which otherwise would never have been considered for fear of failure. The following brief video segment further defines the business case for digital prototyping, and it will also illustrate the power of results visualization available with CFD. CF Design provides a comprehensive solution capable of simulating the entire range of industrial pump applications and pump specific speeds. Along with this single suction double volute mixed flow pump, our customers employ CF Design to optimize the flow performance of double suction pumps, axion radial flow pumps, and multi stage pump configurations. CF Design can also simulate positive displacement pumps such as sliding vane and G rotor configurations along with the gear pump shown here. The classic pump design process requires costly manufacturing, assembly, and physical testing to determine the viability of a design change or to generate a pump curve. Also, physical testing typically does not provide sufficient insight as to what exactly may be impeding performance. By contrast, a process which leverages CF Design technology employs a much more economical virtual testing environment, providing immediate and detailed insight of flow performance so that only proven design concepts are sent over for final validation testing. A pump simulation with CF Design starts in your own native CAD environment. Solid geometry from any major CAD package is launched seamlessly into CF Design to create a virtual pump test bed. CF Design provides comprehensive and intuitive interpretation of the flow characteristics throughout the pump. For example, areas of performance robbing flow recirculation can be visualized by reviewing velocity vectors on a cut plane. Unlike physical testing, where pressure is only available at tap locations, pressure gradients can be obtained throughout the pump, and details, such as this pressure profile to suction inlet, are readily extracted and plotted. The presence of cavitation in a pump can degrade pump performance and cause premature pump failure. In CF Design, these areas which fall below the fluid vapor pressure, such as near the vein leading edges, can be quickly isolated. This velocity isosurface highlights the velocity differential between the inner and outer volutes and also pinpoints a stagnant flow area in the outer volute. It is these types of detailed performance insight which drives intelligent and impactful modifications to the CAD geometry which are then in turn simulated for comparison. The CF Design environment is specifically tailored to facilitate the direct comparison of multiple design studies. Critical performance data, such as this flow rate summary, provides immediate insight to the overall impacts of a design change. Results from different runs can be plotted simultaneously, avoiding the need for a user to collect and compile data. This direct side-by-side -side comparison of results in a single interface enables the user to quickly verify that the design change did indeed have the desired impact, in this case address the stagnant flow region. CF Design also provides the ability to generate pump curves and also monitor hydraulic torque data. This is just a brief overview of how companies such as Cornell and ITT, among others, leverage CF Design technology to shorten their design cycles, cut costs, and maintain a competitive advantage in the pump market. In starting to wind down the event, I would like to share a few final observations and give you some tips on implementing and evaluating your own CFD solutions. As with the adoption of any new technology, some of the first barriers to overcome are complacency and some of the myths you may have heard. Granted, CFD is probably not the best choice for everyone. Uh, perhaps you had to let your engineering resources go in these uh, trying economic times. Uh, maybe your designs are frozen, or perhaps you just now rely on pump consultants exclusively. Chances are, by the way, those same consultants have already been using CFD for years in their own work. Perhaps you feel you're the dominant player in your pump segment. You don't feel you need to really innovate. But be advised that other struggling pump companies will be striving for your business where the difference between winning a contract and losing it could only be one or two percent of the pump efficiency. Maybe you looked at CFD years back or have heard a bunch of rumors. Continuing advancements in both the hardware and software ends have made CFD solutions much more accessible, faster, powerful, and affordable than ever. In evaluating the CFD solution that will be the most effective fit for your design process, I will share some basic criteria for your team to consider in their search. Any viable CFD solution will allow you to look at the velocities, pressure gradients throughout the model. Also, I'll put critical information such as head, RPM, torque, uh, flow rate, so that you could generate pump curves. 
But not all solutions will enable you to compare multiple design concepts side by side in the same interface. This is a really powerful feature which enables even a novice pump designer or a casual observer to quickly detect the impact of a design change. So even the best results start to lose value if you cannot really interpret them correctly and efficiently. Another important aspect is how well the CFD solution integrates with your CAD software. Ideally, you'd want to be able to leverage your existing CAD geometry directly and, if possible, also automatically transfer over items such as part names and material assignments into the CFD model. Most standard engineering computers installed today, which are running CAD, will have multiple processing cores. To maximize efficiency, you want to minimize the compute times. So the CFD solution should also leverage these cores to expedite the solution by breaking up and solving complex tasks in parallel rather than in serial. Does the program automatically use those available cores or are special upgrades required? Finally, training options should be flexible enough to meet your company's preferences. Some companies prefer to have an instructor come on site and teach them in the classic classroom setting. Others find it inefficient to have their employees offline for extended periods of time and not for web-based options where the training can be broken up over several sessions. The important thing here is that you have several choices to select from. In closing the event out, I would first like to thank you for your ongoing attention. Despite the short amount of time we had together today, I hope that I leave you with a good overview of the advantages of prototyping pumps using CFD instead of physical testing. The pump market has always been challenging companies to come up with better performing pumps. Today, those same companies must now be very effective at developing those new designs in order to compete. CFD is a proven method of simulating pumps on your desktop computer instead of physically testing them. The introduction of CFD into your pump design process can help your company not only design better pumps, but design them faster and cheaper. We'll now open things up for a few questions before we run out of time. Well, Mark, we do have some questions, so let's get to them. This first one says, I've heard that you need to have a PhD to use CFD software. Not at all, Jim. Um, this is probably a, mi a misperception that comes from back when CFD technology was really in its infancy, and that was like 20 years ago. I personally have trained many proficient pump designers who had no college degree at all, along with engineers with bachelor degrees, which is what I happen to have as well. Um, there's been a lot of advancements on both the software and software interface technology and the mathematics behind it, which uh, really have resulted in a much more intuitive user experience. All right, our next one would like to know if I have to buy special hardware to run CFD. Good question. That would be uh, probably very unlikely. You know, as recently as three years ago, um, I was still running many pump simulations on just a 32-bit laptop. And even today, I still perform most of my work on a laptop, although it's now a 64-bit machine with uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM. The bottom line is that the same hardware you currently use for your 3D CAD applications would likely suffice for all but the most complex pump simulations. This next one says, rumor has it CFD is not accurate for pumps. Not really true, Jim. Um, any program, you know, you get accurate inputs versus outputs. So for a pump, if you give it some accurate inputs such as geometry, RPM, flow rate, CFD software has been proven to match very well with pump test rig results across a wide variety of pump types. Um, one example I recall is from one of um, CF Design's many pump partners, uh, Fairbanks Morse. They were able to achieve accuracy to within 1% of known test data. And let's look at another one here. Does it really take a week to run just one pump simulation? Um, another good question. Um, that was probably true maybe 10 to 20 years ago. Um, I won't kid you, CFD solutions do require some intense mathematical computations. And back then, the hardware was really being pushed to the limit. Um, but over the years, working in close alliance with the hardware manufacturers, the CFD software has been updated to continually take advantage of the latest hardware technology as it becomes available. Um, today, current solver times are a fraction of what they once were even just a couple years ago. With HPC, which is high performance computing solutions, they take advantage of parallel processing. Um, as one example, Cornell Pump was able to reduce their solve times 
by a factor of over 100. All right, Mark, we are just about out of time, so I need to wrap things up here. I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge of upfront flow analysis and how it improves the design process and stimulate pump innovation. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks, Jim. At the end of each session, I'd ask you to please take a moment to complete the evaluation form that will appear on your screen. It's a good way to let our speakers know how they did today, and it also provides feedback that helps us improve the quality of our Global Spec E events as we strive to make them an even better investment of your time. And you can stay up to speed every day with information delivered right to your inbox because Global Spec offers more than 60 online publications filled with the latest advances in your area of expertise. Sign up for our e-newsletter and our product alerts to get the latest innovations to hit the market. You can find both of these links in the Resource Center under Global Spec Resources and then click General. And please join me again at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. We'll be joined then by Ron Marshall with Manitoba Hydro. He'll discuss different ways to improve performance and reduce the cost of lubricated screw compressors. We'll alert you via our scrolling marquee at the bottom of your screen about five minutes prior to the start of this presentation so you won't miss it. We'll see you back here in the Conference Center at 3 o'clock Eastern Time.